it would be uh, a very, very interesting. Oh, that's nice. So the class will be recorded. Good, good, good. We can always have um, something to fall back on based on what I'll be discussing today. So first of all, um, UI UX is a very interesting part of, or is a very, very important part of tech. And it's one part that involves, or that brings together every other part. We lay the groundwork for the developers, we lay the groundwork for um, the works. I'm trying to pull up my screen. I have a slide that I will be using for today's class. So I'm trying to pull it up, just hold on a minute. And I hope I can share my screen. Uh, but I hope I can share my screen when it's time. But well, I'm waiting for my screen yes, to. Yes, you can share screen. Okay, someone said that you increase the volume. Okay. Um, am I still very audible? Sorry, I think I moved a bit away from my mic before. Okay, my, my screen is coming up now. So, share the screen. But while I wait for my screen to come, Um sorry everyone. Um I think uh um Atona is having a talk issue. Just hold on. It's going to be here shortly. Just give him a few minutes. Right? Don't worry. You would hear him shortly. He's trying to get um a stabilized network. Sorry about that. Just hold on. Yes, hold on. He will be here shortly. 
There's somebody named admin. I have said it before. Sorry, change, sorry, sorry. Change um, your name. Hello. Okay, welcome back, Inka. Sorry. I'm very sorry. My network just acted up for a minute, but I fixed that now. So I'm fully back now and I'm sharing my screen. Can we all see my screen? Uh, let's just use the chat box if you can see my screen. Let me know. All right. Okay. Okay. I I can see your messages. So welcome back. And as I said, I would be taking us on introduction to UI and UX design. UI and UX design. Um, I don't want you to see those term uh, the terminologies I'll be using here as daunting or something uh, out of um a dictionary. No, 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 no. There are actually things that we relate with every day of our live as a tech user in as much as you have a smartphone in as much as you are on this call you relate with different user interface and and you have user experience using those apps so ui ux is what we call user interface and user experience design so it is the process of creating digital products now not only digital products we also create experiences that are intuitive Intuitive in what way? In a way that the product would not make you think. The product would not actually be confusing. The product would be self-explanatory enough that you do not have to read a user manual. Now, have you ever seen any app that before you use it, you will have to get a user manual for such app? It does not exist because all every app, every digital product are designed in a way that is intuitive enough for everyone to understand. Quick um, quick check, if everyone can see, hear me, please drop messages in the chat box for me to, to let me know I am still audible enough and you're following. We have to change the pool on call, so I expect that messages will roll in as fast as possible. Okay, that's good. Two, three, four, nice, interesting. Okay, okay. So user interface and user experience design talks about um, creating a design that is user-centered, creating a digital product that is focused on users, that um, the user actually is in need of. So it involves a deep understanding of the user's need. It involves creating and recreating and recreating and prototyping just to know what the user wants and a continuous testing process. This is never ending. Let me um, um, relate this with you to real life products. I believe you all know how many times your WhatsApp updates within a month or quarterly. There is always a new update being dropped. WhatsApp, even uh, um, recently, the UI of WhatsApp have changed about three times. Like the, the user interface of WhatsApp have changed about three times to give you better user experience. So that is the job of the UI and UX design team for WhatsApp, they keep pushing in new in, uh, innovation to make the app much more intuitive, to make the app much more easy for you to use. So that is our job as user, uh, as UI UX designer. That is our job as product designer. We design digital products that meets the user's expectation. We design digital products that solves this, the user's problem. We design digital products that is intuitive enough and is uh, self-explanatory enough for anyone to pick up and to use. So let me move to my next slide. Now, for, um, for UI UX, uh, there is a process that we have to go through. But before I jump into that, let me explain what UI is and let me explain what UX is. Normally, um, sometimes we always say that the UX should come before the UI. In um, writing it, in, in, in talking about our our um, uh, our skill, it should be UX UI. Well, UI UX has actually gone far because before you can design a user interface, you first of all need to work on the user experience angle. I would um, better explain that. For every user interface, for every relatable user interface that you have used, the UX was the first thing that was worked on. For example, 
let me give a, a, a very generic example, something that we all can relate with. If you want to build a house today and you have your piece of land, before you commence any option on that land, I can hear a feedback there. Please, whoever is, has his, his or her mic unmuted, please mute. Before any construction is, would commence on such piece of land, an architectural design needs to be carried out. Now, the architects would draw out the, uh, draw out the floor plan, where the doors will be, the size of the door, the, the, the size of the, the dimension for the room, where the uh, um, toilet, or the, the restroom will be, and all that will be put into account before a block is laid for such uh, uh, um, building to be uh, to be constructed. So that is also the job of we the UI UX guys. So we do the UX work first. We interview the user. We get to know the user. We get to empathize with the user. We get to understand the user's pain point. Then we now come back and create a possible solution, create design solution for such unique problem that this user is having and make that into user interface that can now be made into digital products that can be used by a user. Are, are, are you with me? Are, are we still together? Okay, I'm getting feedback in, in, in my chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Let me show my chat with you so I would just see how you guys are dropping your messages. Good, let me keep that to this side. All right, okay. So I'm, I'm glad that you are all following me. So after the UX has been figured out, then we now move to, to the UI. The UI is the user interface. A user interface, like the one that we are using for this Zoom call, or if you're on your mobile phone or if you're on your desktop, a user interface consists of colors, shapes, icon, text, and pictures, that's images. Those are the, the, the content of a user interface. Without all this, uh, uh, all this being brought together, being arranged symmetrically, are uh, what gives us a perfect user interface, are uh, what gives us a good user interface. They are what brings about a good user interface. So the UX comes first. That is, before you can design any product, you first need to conduct your user research. You first need to get to know your user. You first need to understand to the user. We call it empathizing with the user. You need to empathize with the user and uh, understand what the user wants in the product, the, 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 the product that the user wants. Um, hold on a minute, please. Okay, I'm back. So that is what UI UX um, entails. So now let me move, uh, let me better explain the UX process. So the design process. So before a design is carried out, you empathize. I mentioned that earlier, you empathize. That, that is, the use, you understand your user need, you understand the pain point of your user, you understand the goals of your user through research, through interviews and through user testing. You get to understand the goals of your user. Then you define you, you define a possible solution for, for such problem that you have empathized with. So you synthesize and insight from research phase, from the research phase, and, and when you have established the problem, you create um, your design goals. You, you define your design goals. After that, we ideate. In the ideation stage, we generate multiple design. We generate multiple uh, uh, um, different designs using the low fidelity wire. I, I, I mentioned earlier. Do not worry if I'm using any big word. I would uh, um, we will understand them and uh, very soon. So we generate what we call we ideate during the ideation process. We generate what we call low fidelity wireframes and create simple sketch on on a notepad to create your design concept possible solution through brainstorming and sketching. So after all of these, then we move to a process called prototyping and testing. Prototyping and testing. 
we prototype our, our, our designs and uh, to you that's transforming the ideas that you have created the, the the rough ideas that you have created the wireframes that you have turning them into a, 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 a linking them all up into a product now not the main product, product that you mean to 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 launch but into a, a, a an idea of the product and testing it out and and testing it out to to know if Okay, I, I can share the slide at the end of the class. I, I just saw your message. I can share the slide at the end of the class to know to know um, if your uh, um, your pro your solution your possible solution meets the user's need. After that, we test we test the the product. We 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 test we run various tests: the alpha test, the beta test, over and over again. Now, the results from the prototyping and the testing will now make us iterate our design again, redefine the design, create a, a much variant of that design for the user. That's uh, what happens in this stage of, of design. Um, the next slide, please. Now, there are, there are principles to uh, of UI design. All this you will be made uh, will be made more familiar with you when we start in the design proper. Your design, there uh, um, should be simple. Simplicity is key when you are creating any UI design. Simplicity is key. You should try to minimize clutters as much as possible. You should try to minimize to to reduce the noise on your screen as much as possible. That makes your design easy to understand by removing um, every unnecessary element and leaving only the essential element to create a clean, intuitive interface. Now, after uh, you have created a simple interface, your interface should be consistent. Consistency is key. Consistency is key. If you notice my slide, as I have started this slide, you will notice that the colors and everything that I have used so far are consistent. Let me go back to, from the first slide again to, to where I am right now. Look at, look at it now. The, the, the first slide, the, the, the font si size, the font type, the font face, the coloring and everything has been consistent across the board. Consistency is key. You should maintain a constant visual style. Because when you when your visual style keep changing and keep changing and keep changing, it creates what we call a, a, a load for this for the brain to process. There is a there is a UI book. There's a that's there's a UI book which I'll be recommending for you guys, and I'll be giving you the P, I'll be sharing the PDF with you also later. It's called "Don't Make Me Think." There is a rule that users do want to spend less than 15 seconds on a screen and they need to know what to do on that screen in less than 15 seconds if you are looking at a screen like as an app screen a digital product screen a website you should know what what to do in less than 15 seconds so it should not be too bogus everything should be simple and consistent without noise accessibility now, the accessibility aspect of it is not only that your product should be accessible uh, um, to, uh, um, to sighted people alone, but your product should be accessible to every category of people. The, those that are colorblind, uh, uh, um, someone who, uh, those that are colorblind, the blind, the deaf, everyone. Like your product should be able it should be accessible enough that once uh, uh, it, it is easy to use, your buttons can be ident identified, icons can be identified. There's a reason why we use text icon and color sometimes. If you notice, to end call on your mobile phone, to end call, uh, the, the icon is a phone facing down or it would be uh, in, in red color. I'm sorry, not all, and it will be red. That is that shows that you are bringing it to an end. Now, for someone who is colorblind, he might he or she might not see the the, the, the red um, coloration of such button, but the fact that the button that the phone faces down would help such person understand that this button 
performs an action called end call action. That's the part of the accessibility. Let me use something as an example also. Um, one of the most accessible uh, uh, um, item in the world right now is the, the traffic lights. The traffic lights anywhere in the world is the same everywhere. That is, the, the arrangement of the color are not, does not change anywhere. The arrangement of the color are the same as it is in Nigeria, yeah, so it is every other country in the world. So uh, uh, when you're building your products, you build your products in a way that anyone that picks your product gets to understand it. We might have, we should all have had, had this, uh, have this problem. There was a time uh, that uh, there was a, a, a door problem. Glass doors give people issue because glass doors um, we are made in a way that we get confused when when we are standing in, in front of the glass door. I'm sure some of us must have had this issue where you would not know if you have to push, pull, or it's a sliding door. Now, if you have experienced such, can I just get um, a response in, in the comment? Like you are in front of a glass door and you are confused if you are, if it's a push door, if it's a pull door, or if it's a sliding door. Or else otherwise there is a, 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 an inscription made on such door. Okay, see, most of us have actually had a glass door problem. The, the glass door problem is, is, um, is, a, is, a, is a pandemic right now so and it is being fixed by uh, it, and it's an easy thing to fix but most of the time the inscription is not placed where our eyes will see it immediately so if you have if uh, as a ui designer now or as a ui designer if you have to place the inscription of such glass door it should be placed in the eye level of whoever is coming walking towards that door so accessibility is key in design so also Oh, yeah, sometimes you walk right into glass doors. Yes, we have, we've all experienced that. Okay, number four, responsiveness. Your design should be responsive. Now, this responsiveness in design is actually much more uh, uh, prominent when it comes to mobile design, or let me say landing pages, website designs. So when you create a website and you create the website for, obviously it is a website, is, is primarily to be viewed on a, a laptop or a desktop computer. But right now we have billions of mobile phones out there. So you should also make sure that your website can respond to the screen size of a mobile phone. The default screen size of, of, of a desktop computer is 1440 by 720 pixels. Don't worry, all of this we will do. Um, we will all, all, all play with this when we get to the UI design and we are on Figma um, um, fully. But um, for a mobile phone, most of the screen size of a mobile phone is 820 by 345. That's most of the screen size. So you should make sure that your, your website or your design can be optimized easily on different devices, be it the desktop device, be it the tablet, be it the mobile phone it can be optimized easily. So that is key when you are designing, uh, when you're creating UI designs. Next slide, uh, sorry about that. Okay, now when it comes to UX, the principles of UX design are, your UX design should be user-centered. So let me explain. Let me try to, uh, uh, to bring up an, another product to explain this also. UX design, that is the, the user experience design should be user centered. Oh, can we hold on a minute, please? Uh, give me a minute. I'm having an issue here. I might see audible, please. I might see audible, please um, respond. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. 
Ai, cu mai ai zis, ai zis, ai zis, ai zis, I think the network is big again. So just hold on, guys. Each time you are not hearing him again, just understand that it could be network. So just hold on for a minute. Just hold on. You will definitely get back. Anytime you don't hear him, just know that it's network. He's definitely coming back. Just hold on. Just give him a minute. That's it. Thank you. If you are just joining, please just hold on. Uh, you already messaged me. He's trying to fix um the network. Just hold on. It would be a short thing. Sorry for that. But just hold on.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm fully back. Uh, my still audible. Can you hear me, please? I'm moving up the chat. Ed, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm very, very sorry. Network is dealing with me, but I think I found a workaround. So I should be stable for the next few, for the next, for the remainder of the class. So let's go. So, um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very, very sorry once again. So let's just continue where I stopped. I was all... <clears throat> all right. Let me slow down. I was talking about the principles of, U of UX design. So UX design is user-centered. So user-centered in what way? To create a, when you create a UX design, you have to have your user in mind. You have to have the user in mind. We are creating the product for the user. That is how the product can be accepted, and that's how the product can be useful for the user. Okay, for example, like let me give an example. This is a, a, a massive product that we all, we all are, should have interacted with. So many, if, uh, many years ago, um, a set of guys had a meeting, and after their meeting, they stepped out from the meeting hall or from the uh, from the company, and had to wait thirty minutes to get a taxi. At that point, it, it occurred to them: Why do we always have to wait for taxi? Why can't we have a taxi waiting for us? And ladies and gentlemen, lo and behold, that was how Uber was given birth to. Just that simple idea. So it turns out that most people have this problem. The, this problem is user-centered. They conducted some um, um, user research. They, they found out that majority of people, business class people, uh, uh, um, working class people, majority of people who need to get from point A to point B are having the same problem they are also experiencing. So people prefer to have taxi waiting for them instead of having to wait 30 minutes to get taxi. Sometimes in the, in the rain, in the sun, in the snow. So it is, uh, it is more logical to have a taxi waiting for you than to wait for a taxi. So it was user-centered. It, it, they, they carried out, they defined the user's need, which is to have a taxi waiting for them, ease of, of, of access, the user go, their pain point. People are pained by having to wait over and over and over again to get a, 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 a ride. So that's uh, the, 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 the process that needs to go into it. So the, the, your product should be user-centered. Are you still with me? Can we relate with what I am saying? If you can relate, just type relate, relate, relate. I don't want to see yes this time. I want to know if you are following me. Smooth, smooth, smooth. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So after your, your product is user-centered, your product should also have an emotional impact. In the, in the marketing world, uh, the, the marketers sell, uh, the, or the, 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 uh, they play on our emotion to sell products to us. The same thing happened to, uh, to uh, we do the same also as U UX designer. We do the same also. We, uh, we, we create a product that triggers an emotion in, uh, um, um, from the user. You, you notice everything about us is about the user. We focus majorly on the user because without the user, our product is not going to actually have much to do. So we we create a, 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 a we are we create a product that have an emotional impact on the user. Let me go back to my Uber example also. When the 
this that new product coming out, everyone realized that wow, we have seen the light. This is actually possible. We don't have to wait uh, uh, um, a, a long time for, for taxi. You can easily just in, in the comfort of wherever you are while you are dressing up, book your taxi uh, and have your taxi waiting for you before you you even step out of your building. So it makes. Uh, um, it makes moving from point A to point B an easy tax. It's it it gives um um a, an ease of of comfort to the user. Usability. Now you should ensure that your product is easy to use. I have mentioned this before when I while I was talking about the the UI part. It should be easy to use. Your product should be efficient. And your product should be delightful for the target audience. Your product should be easy to use, efficient, and delightful to the target audience. One of the reasons why we always conduct user research is that you need to get to understand your user. Okay, you need to know the ecosystem of your user. Are your users learned, or how many percentage of learned users do you have? I, I, I noticed something recently that WhatsApp have so much uh, um, perfected their UX design in a way that even um, someone who is an illiterate can use WhatsApp today. WhatsApp is so easy to use that everyone can use it. In fact, TikTok got that uh, um, got the job done easily. That you would uh, for everyone who, uh, who who joins TikTok today. You do not have to have um, a BSc degree, or you, you, you do not have to get a high score in SAT before you can use all of these social apps. They are they they are so easy to use, and they are so efficient in holding your attention that you will just not drop it when you pick it up. So your uh, your product, it doesn't have to be an app this time around. Your digital product must be easy to use must be efficient and be delightful for your target audience also your product should be your your ux design should be adaptable that it should have what we call adaptability your design your design should be easy to accommodate diverse user need and preferences i will still use the same whatsapp i used as example earlier now whatsapp notice that not everyone can type and uh, and can can text easily so the uh, voice note got introduced so if you're not learned enough to carry a conversation uh, um, uh, to, to, to type and use the qwerty keyboard you can easily record a voice note and you will still get your message across are we uh, are you with me please <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, are you with me, please? I'm not getting any response. Am I still audible? Okay, you are with me. All right, thank you very much. So let me keep this train going. So your your you should be able to adapt your product, that's your digital product, to a a diverse range of people. You should be able to adapt your product to everyone in different category. That means that you should make sure that your product is is uh, uh, available, is accessible. Sorry, <clears throat> I think I need to get water. Give me a minute, please.
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So your product should be adaptable and meet every category of user need. Like your user base should all be, you should all, you should think about all of them in the ideation phase. So thank you very much, Oluwache um, for me. So now, um, the one of the uh, uh, the design concepts also is minimizing your content. I I mentioned this in the UI uh, uh, principle also. You should always make sure that your contents are as minimum as possible. Like uh, most apps, or if you have an app that is doing too much, like too much is happening. Have, if you have used the Uber app, you will notice that on the screen, you have the map up there and just two questions. Where are you going to? Or your location and your destination. Your location and your destination. Those are the, the, the key thing that that screen needs, need, needs from you. So they do not have to now load the screen with so many other irrelevant. It should be as easy as uh, and as relatable for a four to eight year old. So your, your navigation should be intuitive enough that anyone can uh, uh, access it, anyone can use it, anyone can relate with it. Your, your, dis, your layout should be responsive. All of these things we will still do when we get into design proper, but this class is an introductory class and I, just want to cover every um, bit of aspect to it. I mentioned accessibility of design earlier, and right now I want to further break it down uh, uh, more. Remember, I used um, people that are colorblind for, um, as an example. So color contrast is very, very essential in your design. Color contrast is very, very essential in your design. So if you have a series of color on your screen, the, all your colors contrast each other. That, that is, uh, do not place a white text on a white background image. Uh, that would cause, that's a, that's a terrible contrast and it will be very, very difficult to read such text. So as ensure sufficient color contrast for legibility and visibility. So color contrast is key when you are uh, creating your user interface design. So your keyboard accessibility is very, very important also. If, if, you, if your design supports uh, an audio input, so if you have your keyboard, you should have your audio icons also there. All of this would be would be um, treated in depthly when we uh, move into the uh, full design phase. But I am this is an introductory class. Then the, our next class we will start talking about some US concepts. Uh, then screen reader support for the uh, um, for for those who are visually impaired, screen reader support actually uh, uh, gives them so much uh, 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 flexibility and involves them in using your apps also. It, your design should be inclusive for everyone based uh, depending on their ability and their background. Anyone can actually use WhatsApp. Anyone can use Facebook. Anyone can use TikTok. Instagram is open for everyone. If you notice, um, the, the user rate of WhatsApp and the user rate of Telegram is quite different because Telegram is a bit technical. Actually, I enjoy using Telegram a lot, but not everyone uh, uh, can use okay, and, and find Telegram easy to use or easy to navigate because it is a bit technic technical. Now, unlike WhatsApp and Slack also the, uh, that we are using for um, this program, you will notice that Slack is more technical compared to WhatsApp. WhatsApp is uh, a, a social platform open for all, but Slack has some technicality to it. You need to have a level of understanding to use Slack, or to, um, um, a level of, of technological know-how to use Slack. Unlike WhatsApp, which is open to all, Slack is much more uh, 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 
uh, has its own target audience. Let me use that word. It's not like tag uh, Slack has a terrible UX. No, it does not have a terrible UX and does not have a terrible UI, but they have their target audience. They believe that uh, uh, Slack will be used by professionals uh, uh, in their field. So for you to be a professional in, in such field, you should have a level of understanding to use the app. Are you seeing the, the, um, the, the different contrast between this now? An app that is designed for all, and, a, and an app that is designed for a certain uh, 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 set of, or, or a certain group of people. Are you still with me, please? Why am I not getting any response in my chat box? Come on. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. So these days now we are we are having some emerging trends in the UI UX world, and uh, this is in fact the biggest one right now is the virtual reality and the augmented reality, designing for AR and designing for VR. But let me not let me not scare you with that. Relax, breathe. You will get there that you start creating interfaces for VR headsets interfaces for um, augmented reality interface and all of that. Well, let's swipe that to the left for now. And let's focus on what we have in front of us. Voice interface. Yes, voice interface is now uh, 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 is now a big thing. Even um, I during the week now, there, there have been two big announcements in the AI world, in the AI design world, and voice interface has not, is now working with ChatGPT. Gemini also launched their own voice interface also, and come on, everywhere is buzzing. So voice interface is, is becoming a thing in, in design, and I feel like uh, in the next six months or um, to, to one year, we'll be doing, we'll, we'll be having uh, uh, products that uh, are more focused on voice input instead of text input, or, in, or, or instead of um, having to click an, uh, a button or click an icon. But well, when we get to that bridge, we will be ready and we'll cross it comfortably. Augmented reality, uh, uh, that one is also integrating AI to create a massive and interactive digital experience. I'm currently working on a product um, on, um, on an estate uh, on a real estate app, whereby you can take VR tour uh, uh, um, of the apartments that you are looking at. You don't have to actually go to the apartment physically. You are not plugging your VR headset and take a VR tour of such apartments to view such, such apartments. It's still a work in progress, and it's essentially quite interesting uh, what uh, what I have been able to uncover while while working on the design for the um, mobile app. But let's still swipe that for now. We will, we will all get there and very soon. And I'm, I'm sure that most people in, in, in this class here will work together on projects also. Personalization. Now, uh, right now, uh, customizing interface and feature to better suit an individual is something that is also coming up also. That is, you would, uh, you will, you will design the, the, the basics of, of how the interface will look like, but someone might want to use a dark team. Someone might want to use um, to change some um, their own color scheme of, of a mobile app. So in your design, you would make an uh, uh, you will make the adjustment for that. You will make the 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 the, the variant of such screen um, to be available also. Also conversational design. So this comes up when we are designing intuitive chatbots, virtual assistants to like, like it's it creates more of a, a interaction. Like what I um, talked about uh, about earlier in the voice interface phase. Also, um, the new announcement from from OpenAI uh, uh, um, is like it, it's it's an intuitive chatbot that you have a voice conversation with, and in real time also the texts are being generated. So all of these are the beautiful things that we are still to experience in the world of UI UX design. Uh, let's see my final slide, then I will take questions. And you might have been wondering, what are the careers that we can find in UI UX design? If, I, if I'm done learning UI UX, what are the careers that are available for me? Uh, there are so much of it, but I just have to highlight these three major ones and uh, under these three, we still have different career paths. We have the user experience designer. That is, you 
uh, you are responsible for conducting user research, creating personas, and designing intuitive user flows and interaction. We will discuss all of this in our next class on Friday. Like some of, sorry, not all of this, some of this will be discussed in our next class on Friday because we, were, we are starting this class with US. You can, become, you can get a, a, a job role as a user interface designer, that is a UI designer. As a UI designer, you focus on visual design on, of, of digital products, that's creating the layout, creating the typography, choosing the color, the iconography, the images, and manipulating shapes, creating illustration, and different other interesting stuff. Or you can be an interaction designer. Now, as an international designer, you are you are specialized in designing behavior and responsiveness of user interfaces. That is, when I over over this button, when I move over a button, what happens? I don't know if you can see uh, um, the the header of that's the zoom icon over my. I I can't see the screen you are seeing. I wanted to create a. a a feedback screen so I can see it, but uh, an interaction designer creates interaction, that, that is, creates uh, micro interaction in a design. In mobile apps, we have micro interactions and all. Yes, okay, yes, the 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 the, the over effect that, that it is given, but we, we, also, we actually create all of this in our design classes. All of this would, we would make use of all of this in our design classes. So these are like, one of the three major roles of, of UI UX design. But under these three major roles, we have uh, uh, a whole lot of roles also that are available under them. And uh, as a designer, you, you are very important in the product creation process. Websites, mobile app, softwares, um, um, smartwatch apps, Yes, as small as we design for any screen, like literally any screen, a smartwatch, a refrigerator screen, because they all come with screens now, uh, a, 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 um, the, the, the dashboard of a vehicle, that yes, smart vehicles now, or let me say electric vehicles now, rely on intuitive and interactive user interfaces for them to function. Um, the, your, anything that has a screen and a software, a, a product can be installed on it, the design for such product falls on us as UI UX designers. Okay, so I have completed my slide now and I would love it if we have any question. I am open to your questions now. You can ask me questions. Raise your hand, as um, Ope said earlier. If you have any question, raise your hand, and I will call you out to ask a question. And that we also are, we also have the opportunity to meet you. I believe that we should have question. It's, so if you don't have any question, it's either I did a terrible job or I did a very good job. But let me know. Question time. Anybody, somebody. I can't see any hands yet. Or oh, let me see. Let me view. The participant lists. No hands yet. Okay, we have our first questions. Oluwase for me. Okay, you can unmute yourself while I'm uh, I'm with her. Please, if you have question, also raise your hand. I would be glad to answer your questions. The floor is yours, Oluwase for me. She said she will use the chat box. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me open up the chat box. No minutes. Okay, please uh, drop your question. And if you feel like you don't want to ask question, also you can use the chat box. But I would have love. I would love to hear from us and actually get to meet us. Right here for me. I'm waiting for your message. Any other person that has question, please raise your hand. I believe you should have question. This is our first class. At least there should be something. Uh, 
finally, okay, we have another person. Okay, okay. So you can ask your question, Lauren. Hello, sir. Um, thank you for today's class. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. You can hear me, okay. Um, my question was in line with the uh, uh, front and uh, develop developer or development. Does it also use part of your UX design, including the front and part of systems and the website, or the interconnect? In short, do we also need knowledge? in front end development while creating UI and UX design. Okay, if I get your question correctly, Lauren, you said uh you want to uh you want to know if a front end developer and a UI UX developer are the same uh, um, if it's the same, or what is the, the the what's the difference between a front end developer and a UI UX designer, right? Yeah, if they have any similarities or knowledge, they share the same knowledge. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, a front end developer and a UI UX developer. Now, before a front end developer can design uh, or can create the front end of a website they uh, the ui ux guys would first have to work on it that is it is the design created by by the user and the, the product designer that the front end developer would develop and convert into code a front end developer writes html css and javascript codes a UI UX designer, we, we carry out research and we create design for the front end developer. Actually, we are two, two separate people. We are two separate people. Have I answered your question, please? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So I have a I have two questions in the chat box. Let me quickly attend to that. So uh Okay, I'm still here to get Uluwache from his chat box. Um, a messy uh, question, but I have a question from admin. Now, I don't know who that is. I would have preferred your name. Well, it says, my question is, what's the differentiating factor between a product designer and an interaction designer? Now, a product designer is one who designs a product, like from, from the beginning to end. What then a product also, you as a product designer can add micro interactions to your product. Micro interaction in, in what way? Um, you might add, add some add, add some animation, some over effects, and some other micro interactions to your product. But an interaction designer actually focus solely on creating interactions on a product. That is, a product designer can design a flat product. What am I by, by a flat product? You can design a product who, with, with no interaction just the the shapes the icons and the colors and gives to an interaction designer who now create interaction in that in, in such product now interaction are like mini animations they are not full animation but they're like mini animation that just um help nudge the user in the direction you want them to follow are you with me <clears throat> So um, that is just the, the basic difference between a product designer and an interaction designer. A product designer can, can create interaction also. As a product designer also, you can actually get a, a role as an interaction designer and just create interaction only and not the product. Okay, I I I, I once know a, a guy who works, um, who, who worked, sorry, he worked with with Google and he worked with a team of over 50 designers. That is how large the design team was. And his job was just to uh, um to create buttons, just to, to create buttons. That was just his, his job. He is a product designer, he can create virtually everything on the page, but he was employed 
to iterate and make the button better. So you have to just stick to your job description. So I, I believe you, uh, I, I believe I've answered your question. So uh, moving on to the next question from Zainab Amusson. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Zainab. Uh, I would like to know how UI UX designers go about VR and AR. I believe it's an entire aspect of just designing products. VR and AR are still very new, and we are actually exploring and moving into that phase also because um, we cannot stand still as everything is moving around us. So um, I, 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 as I said it, anything that has a screen or that has an interface, it is the job of a UI user to create a user interface for search. VR headsets have an interface when once you put it on. So the the interface the user will re, would interact with is our job to create it and bring such interface to life. So yes, it is uh, the dynamics of, of VR right now and AR right now is still uh, there are still so many changes happening there. But yes, we are we are already creating. Um, digital products for VR also, like digital products for augmented reality and virtual, rea virtual reality right now. It is still under, um, it, it's still a product designer's job. We are still creating product also. It's, it, it is one of what we do. Please, you can, um, if, I'm, if my response to your question is not satisfactory, please, you can still drop your response under it. Agatha, okay, uh, what is the, Sorry, I, I just got disconnected. I hope I can still. Uh, I was asked answering a question from Agatha just now. Uh, I can't find my the chat screen again. I can't find my chat. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And all the messages are gone. Please. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Well, so the product manager or product management is you be a, a, is a set of people like a supervisor involved in the life cycle of the product. After the product, product designer is, is through working on the product, it moves to the developers. It's still the product manager's job to follow up that product until the product is, moves from the development stage to the launch stage. So no, our job is different. The, a product management person or a product manager does not conduct user research, is not involved in designing, it does not work with user interface. I believe I've answered that. Please, as, as I said, if my response is not satisfactory, let me know. And if it's satisfactory also, let me know. Thank you. Is it advisable to focus on just one if you are really not interested in pursuing both? Because, both? because I've heard a lot of, about UI, UI, such as it's not easy, but I'm sure that. Okay. My advice is that you need to know both. You cannot create great UI if you don't know UX. Let me repeat that. Your UI, that is your user interface, would not be top-notch if you have no idea about user experience. So for you to create the best user experience, you need to know, to understand your user. So you need to be conversant with user uh, 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 with, with the UX also. To create the best user interface, you need to come out with the user experience end of things. There are times that you will not be the one to run the the, um, um, the research. A company can come up with the data, can come to you data that have already been processed 
data that I've already been turned into dashboard and hand over the data to you to use to create your user interface. They can give you a design brief and uh, uh, um, data from the users that they have collected. Okay, I was um, I wanted to upgrade a, a, a learning app recently. <coughs> sorry, sorry, excuse me. The learning app was launched about four years ago and has been on Play Store for a while. So I have enough information to go with. There are so many comments from users that have used the product. So that serves as my research. So I, I took all those comments, filter through them to, to know the pain point of the user in creating the new, uh, 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 the upgraded product or the 2.0 version of, of, of that product that we have now relaunched and it's getting positive uh, uh, reviews on Play Store currently. So I, I believe that answers your question, Oluwache Ifumi. Please, if you're not conf uh, okay with my response yet, let me know. Jen, okay. Jen, what skill or knowledge do you need to have to distinguish a good design from a bad design? Very easy. The more you study to be a, a product designer, the, the easier it will be for you to identify terrible design. If I see a terrible design right now, I know that, oh, oh no, this is terrible. This does not work. Like, this is not what a design should look like. This is not how to interact with, uh, uh, with a design. Like, you would see it. You don't need to have any skill or knowledge like that. But once you start interacting with good design, once you start creating good design, once you read design, okay, under the skill of knowledge, I will share some design books with you. As I've said, I will, I will share some, um, some, some PDFs with you. And, and I would I'll open and, and wish that you would read those books. One of them is The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. Um, Don't Make Me Think by Stephen Cook. Those two books, they are, like the, they, they, they are very, very important for upcoming designers. When you read this book, after reading the book, you'll be able to see a terrible design from a mile away. Like you don't even have to interact with it before you know that this design is actually not user-friendly. So I believe I've, I've, I've answered your question, Jen. Okay, Uluwache Ifumi says she's okay with my response. Thank you very much. Any other person have any question, please raise your hand. I still have time to spend with you. Maybe I will get to know some of you right about now. A mic is unmuted. I think someone wants to speak to me. So please don't be shy. I would love to speak to you also. Anybody, somebody? Come on. So we have no other questions. That's interesting. Okay. We still have, are we, are we sure we have no other question? Nobody have any other question? I still have some time to spend with you guys. So I feel like I would love to get to know you guys. And um, how will I do this? Oh, I'll, do you have somebody that cannot hear me? I believe my audio is I, like I'm quite audible. Is there anyone that cannot hear me? That's okay. But I saw a, a thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. But you can unmute your mic, Rose, for me to get to meet you. Uh, if you can unmute your mic and just tell me one interesting thing about you or where you are from, where you are joining this course from and I would love to get to meet you guys because I feel like we, we would have a relationship for the next three months so it would be interesting to get to know you and I think our hosts have something for us one minute let's hold on a minute host have something for us. our host is raising and so uh the floor Hi. is yours thank you thank you Inka I'm sorry guys I just want to let you know that there's, an, there's going to be an attendance sheet that will be dropped in the comment session. The attendance sheet is not going to be dropped on Slack. 
is simply for those who attended this class. So please, when they drop it, they're going to drop it in the next one minute. Please, class rep, drop the attendance now. When they drop it, ensure to fill immediately. Fill immediately. It is not going to be sent on Slack channel. If you come to my DM and say, please, I, for, I didn't get it on time, I will not answer. You will pay me money before I answer you. Thank you. All right, Hinka. All right, okay. So I believe someone was about talking to me the other time. I want to get to meet you guys. Someone was about, um, someone, someone just unmuted their mic to speak to me. So I am ready to hear from you now. Mary, thank you very much, Mary. It's very easy to understand. Oh, I am very glad that I that you understood me easily. Mary, I would love to know where you are joining this class from, and I would love to hear from you. Can you unmute your mic? Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mary. Okay, I'm I'm calling from I'm joining the class from Kaduna. In of Kaduna, Nigeria. Wow. Nigeria. Yes. All right. Okay. It's nice to meet you, Mary. To meet you too, sir. Oh, okay. Marsh is joining us from Kenya. Okay, Marsh. Uh, we are glad to have you here. But I would want more people to unmute their mic. Is she does she if wants to speak to me or you are still raising your hand from the last time? Hello, Agatha, sir. thank you very much. I am glad I could put you on the right track. Thanks so much. Okay, someone was, is about, was about to speak earlier, so the floor is yours. Hello, sir, and everyone else. Rose, hello. Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. All right, so my name is Rose. I am from Machakos, Kenya, and I am super excited and looking forward to a great three months of learning and interacting with fellow UI UX designers. Yes, thank you, sir, for the session. It was informative and it was very um, beginner friendly for us who are starting out in UI UX design. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Rose. You're welcome, Rose. It's my pleasure that you um, uh, that you get to understand it. I'm also very, 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 very excited. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. I'm very, very excited for this class. And oh, will we have such a nice time together. And uh, my co-facilitator would also be taking you some classes. And I'm sure you will enjoy her also. It's quite fun to be around. So okay, thank you. Well, sir, I'm also a student. I'm also a student in this class. Oh, uh, Ellen, yeah. good evening. Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Ellen, you can speak. Hello, good evening. We can hear you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is I'm based in Ocean. Hello? Yeah, hello. Okay, yeah. I have that. I'm I'm glad we are glad to have you, Ellen. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Yeah. Ellen from Ocean. Thank you. I can but at least I could be able to learn one or two things and gain one or two things as well. Thank you so okay. much, sir. I believe the recording will be made available also. So if you uh, if there's anything that you need to review, please feel free to go through the recording. And I am on the Slack channel with you guys also. So you can just say hi to me. And if you have any question, I would, once I repeat your question, I will make sure I find time to reply you and thank to you. Yes, I will drop the slide on the Slack channel for you guys. I will drop this, this slide on the Slack channel for you guys. Thank you for reminding me, Mary. 
I will try and drop the slide tonight before I turn in for the night. Yes, you will be getting the slide, March. You'll be getting the slide. So nobody wants to speak to me again, apart from all those that have spoken before. Okay. Uh, though it should still be nice to say hi to some of you. Okay. Oh, we have someone else from Nairobi, Kenya. Nice to have you in the chat section. I'm sure you don't want us to hear your voice. No problem. Uluwache, you for me, you've been trying to speak and you'll be going, you've not been able to, but the floor is still yours if you want to. Quite interesting and friendly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, okay, since we have no other question, let's just wait for the attendance to be dropped, please. Fill out the attendance before you leave this call. It is very, very important. You don't want to go and pay um, the our host a huge amount of money just because you miss your attendance. Louis from Ghana, great to have you here. It's great to have you. I'm excited to be here with you guys. The attendance has been dropped now. Let's all feel the attendance as it is very, very important so that we can know those who are active and those who are willing to learn. And I can assure you, you are going to enjoy every bit of this journey. Creating design, as my uh, my co-facilitator said in, 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 the, in the welcome, uh, in the onboarding live call that happened on Monday, as designers, we provide solution to problem. We create solutions to problem through our design. Our design is literally a solution to a problem. So that is what we do. That is like uh, um, our calling. We identify a problem, we create a solution for it. Sally, nice to have you from Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you also for joining the session. You guys made the session fun because as I'm saying the number of, of participants, I am gingered to actually communicate more. And once again, I am very, very sorry for how my network happened um, earlier. I would make sure that in our next class on Friday, I set everything to move smoothly without any hindrance. I would I promise you that there would be no hindrance at all in our next section on Friday, or everything would go smoothly. So uh, let me remind you again, fill out the attendance, very, very important. It's, it is very, very important to fill out the attendance form because it helps us know, it, it helps us keep track of those of you who are in class. Anybody wants to say hi to me before I end this call? I'm also saying hi. Hey, hello. Do I so follow what I say? Hi. <laughs> I know, I know, I, 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 I know you're the one already. <laughs> I'm also saying, my, I'm also a student to eh, Mr. Inka. I'm also a student. Please. So I'll be I, asking questions. You are, you are our guard, you talk. Eh? No. You are our host. I'm learning UI UX. I want to be like you when I grow up. Ah, okay, ma. <laughs> but it's nice to be here also. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm seeing how much you guys are. All um submitting your names for attendance. Thank you. I'm all, all right. right. Um, yeah. Thank so you. Can, That's we, all for me. can I sign out of the? Can I buy out, buy out of the class now?